everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris Uh, yeah, it's true, it's true. I know of your music because I've done some research, looked at some of your music, and you have got a very versatile pr- um, approach, man. Where does that your inspiration come from when it comes to approaching your music? Um, music wise, it's like let's go up a little bit. Music wise, um, where would I say? I've always kind of had like an eclectic um, taste in music. So I, I guess you start from. Maybe my earliest memories might be my, whatever my mum was listening to, like yeah, yeah, 60s or 70s soul or whatever, and African oh, music yeah. as well. And then you 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 go through the timelines and then it's like popular music. So, you know, I'm an 80s baby, so thinking back to those whoop, whoop. pop classics and stuff from back them times. Yeah. And then it's, you know, whether you're into it or not, you're hearing it everywhere and it's everything. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, and then I have an older brother, so tuning into whatever he was listening to. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you see what I'm saying. And then you get to a point where you you find your own lane, and it's like, okay, yeah, 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 I'm into this. And then even now, like, yeah, I listen, I listen, you know, I listen to, you know, from from gangster rap to like like Dido and Keen and Cold uh, yeah, yeah. and Charlie, I'm, I'm a bit like that as well. And Bob Marley's <laughs> and things like that. So all of that. It just it just comes out kind of thing. It, it all just comes out. Yeah, my music tastes the same. It's very diverse. I'll just I'll be listening to some gangster rap, like or like one of my favorites, Red Man. I'll be bumping a Red Man, and then next thing you know, I'm listening to Natasha Bedingfield, and I'm like, and people are like what? That's just that's how I am, really. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I found sometimes I, I I think I go back to the story. So as long as you're you know, I I get sucked in by the the narrative. Of, of what you're saying. Obviously, there's the melodies and sounds or whatever, but I've always been, and even up to now, like more time when I'm really listening to a song, I'm, I'm picking out what are you actually saying and how you're saying it kind of thing. Whereas I know some people might just be, you know, the melody and the way you're saying things or the beat. But for me, it's always, okay, what are you saying? Is there, can I follow this narrative? Can I relate to this narrative? And then I'll come back and be like, oh man, did you hear the beat? What the beat does there and what it. And then it'll be yeah. like, oh, my God, did you hear the way he said this or she said this and this and done that with their voice? But I'm all about the narrative because I'm, I'm primarily just That's a storyteller myself kind of thing. So that always kind of draws me in. And, and when I think about those kind of alternative-ish genres, when you think about the Keens and the Coldplays and them guys, I, yeah. I've always admired their storytelling. Do you know what I mean? Because okay, it's, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like, whereas sometimes R&B and our music, if you like, can sometimes be very much direct in it do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. there's no ambiguity i'm saying what i'm saying it is what it is Fair sometimes enough. with them yeah. songs you gotta to listen to it two three times before you even understand what the hell they're talking about that's true you know do you know oh, what i mean oh, oh, if you got they're, older you're like oh that's what you're talking about that's yeah true. like years later like yeah, yeah. Like, there's songs that i hear up to now and it only might just be recently i'm really you know realizing that a song i'm yeah. listening to for years oh that's what you're talking about <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know oh, I mean? Yeah, like there was one. I remember even I remember watching one. It might have been like Adele or one of these type of pop people, yeah. or an Ed Sheeran or something. And he was saying there's one of their songs that is always played at weddings, but yeah, the song's yeah. actually about death. I was just like, Psh, all right, cool. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah, it just is nice. what it is, kind of thing. So that's always interesting. I think as well with me, I like to also. If it helps me to understand an artist. I'm, I'm very deep like that. I like to watch a biography and understand why an artist is the way they are. Because I remember right. um, some people still might not like it, but I'm going to talk about um, the DMX right. at one point. A lot of people stopped listening to him because he had that devil talk and did it do. Right. And then so everyone's like, stop listening to his music, burn his stuff, free it away. But I've watched his biography and I'm kind of like, right, I get why he's doing that. Because he's not... Right. He's not He's not doing it because he likes the devil. Look at his upbringing, what he's been through. You have to understand yeah. what he's gone through to why he's doing that. I don't agree with what he's doing, but I can understand it and respect the fact that he's been through some stuff in his life and it's led him to who he is. So I think that's another thing that gets me into artists as well. So 
just understanding what they are about or why they're doing it. So right. That, that's yeah. Thing as well. Cause that, I think that can, that can, that can draw you into an artist even more than the quality of the music. Like I find that sometimes like, yeah, I'm I'm first attracted to someone's story, and then you yeah. hear the music and you're like, all right, cool. And oh, the music resonates yeah. more now that I know the narrative, now that I know yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then sometimes if you just hear the music and there's no real context, it, you, you know what I mean? You're just literally yeah, judging yeah. it based on that. But then when there's a little bit of context, when you know the story, then it's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm down with you. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling. It. I get. I get. Or at least I get it. Kind yeah, of yeah. It, you know. And talking about getting things. Um, because of was how I discovered you, I understood your the song, that song you did, "Baby in My Bed." Oh yeah. yeah, my gosh! Like <laughs> when you did that song, it was like, wait a minute, this is a whole new breath of fresh air. Because a lot of people do songs for about their children in a very not not mushy, but you know they have a little it's like a dedication where it's like you came across a more comedic. It's like you know right. like, it's, this is actually funny. Like you 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 know you know what I mean you're you're talking in a different way. Like what made you come up with that whole song? The concept I think is amazing. Like uh, appreciate like, it. Like, I love like yeah that song. Um, <laughs> so and that, that, that song at the from? moment is is doing really well for me. Um, but it came about so there's an well, obviously like the beat we all remember the beat from Fuji's. Fuji's, yeah, there's yeah. a guy called Row to Me. I don't know if I'm pronouncing yeah. it right. And he's got a yeah. he's got a in my bed song, but he's talking about a woman being in his bed or something like that. Yeah, obviously, yeah. like an R and B Afro beat kind of tune. Yeah. And then he must have done um, put it out as like a challenge. So whoever can write a verse to in my bed, and then obviously, I was listening. You know, the rapper in me kind of thing. I heard the beat and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then when I listened to some of the 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 responses, if you like, that people were coming up with, it was all along the line of "There's a woman in my bed." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. And then at some point, it just clicked on the baby in my bed part, and I just started thinking about my <laughs> son being in the bed, like all up in my space and that. And I'm just like, actually, and then literally the words just started flowing, and it, it, all, just, it all just because he's slightly past. He, he still comes in the bed now, to be fair, <laughs> but he's like, yeah. He's slightly past it now, but it was all just coming back to me, like, bro, yeah, yeah. like, the this, the that, the foot in the face, the this, the that, yeah. and he doesn't want to go, the missus, <laughs> he's getting into it with the missus, like, take the baby, like, no, no, no. So all of that, started, all of that oh. just started coming back to me, and I thought, you know what? So I did it, and funny enough, before I put it out, I'd actually done it, and it was just there, I was just, I know, I'd actually, I hadn't recorded it, but I'd written it, so I would recite yeah. it in my head, and just having a little bit of fun with it, because I actually missed the deadline for the guy's competition. So I think he was giving away like two grand prize or something. I was like, okay. And then I got caught up with other stuff I was doing. So I never really actually recorded it in time. And then one day I found a beat again on my laptop. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, remember this. Let me just record it. So then I recorded it. um, I played it to one, two people. And the reaction was really good. And then I started thinking, okay, you know, everything's visual now. Like, how do I bring this to life? So then that kind of delayed me again because it was like, okay, I don't know how. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not going to be able to get my son to actually sit still and film it. And then, so I was, I was trying to think of like creative ways to kind of like tell this story now. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes, because like the reaction I get when someone's watched the video is a lot greater than if someone just listens to the song, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, think, video, yeah, I, I think there's some songs I like that where the video, you have to see the video to understand the song. Right, sometimes. right, so, right, right. Yeah. So... And then, um, yeah, I just started doing some research and thinking about creative ways to do it. And then, yeah, it just came out how it came out. Um, um, I found some, like, different artwork things and just kind of customised it and edited them. I did it all myself as well and just, like, you know, added in some performance shots of literally me on the couch. And um, I was like, and I was just like, all right, let's just, let's just see how this goes. Like, do you know what I mean? And then I put it out and then the reaction was just amazing. So then it, it's just kind of just been snowballing, boy. So, so far, no, so good. Man, it was good. It was like the video, the video, everything. I was just scrolling through Instagram and then I was thought, let me see this. And then just talking about your baby in your bed. And I thought, rah, like, that's different. Like, because no one wouldn't do that. Like, I haven't seen that yet. So that's the thing. Yeah, I've never no, seen I appreciate that, that man. I appreciate seen, that. Seen Drew Hill in my bed. Like, there's another man in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and woman in my bed, baby in my bed, because it's like you're talking, your father talking from another side that most fathers would not be afraid to talk, say for a minute. Like, most of them would be like, Oh, yeah, he's my son, he's all right. It's like, No, this 
express how you feel, man. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, and I think that's the thing as well. It's like, yeah. you know, we're all just humans. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. we don't have to pretend. Every... It's like when you meet a new a new parent or whatever, and they're just yeah. telling you all the great stuff about it. Sometimes just keep it real. Like, you're stressed, it's you're real, tired, man. you haven't slept in however many days. <laughs> like, it's what it yeah, is. You got you got back problems. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like it, this is real. Of course, it doesn't take away how you feel about your child. But yeah, this yeah. is. This is what I'm doing. Like, I have, like, there was times yeah, exactly. I'm rolling around like a zombie. Like, I haven't slept. Like, that's just real. Like, that, you're not saying you hate your child. You're just saying, yeah, no, it's that. This, this is what it is. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, the response has been really good, man. The response has been really good. So I'm really no, grateful man. for that. It's true. I hope it gets even more response, man. That's an amazing track, man. Oh, I like that one. I hope. So, um, moving on then. Um, so, talking about, also, you wrote a book, I believe, Terrible, 10 Terrible Tips. Right. Talk to us about that book, man. Like, what what inspired you to write it? What's it oh, about? Cool. You know? So that kind of like I was alluding earlier to the whole. For a long time, I was making music and I was just making it and wasn't really thinking really about how to get it out or how to really sustain a career. So, sorry, the ten ter- terrible tips came about when I started thinking about as musicians all the kind of advice or unwritten rules that we have been following. So if I think about myself, you know, it's like, you know, make the best song you can make, make the best video you can make, make sure you get it to that person over there, they're gonna change your life. And, you know, make sure you do all the shows in your area, make sure you, and like, when I looked at all of these things, it's like, I started really questioning them and thinking, well, who has this really worked for? Like, do you know what I mean? Because I think like, for me personally, and even if I just observe my peers around me, a lot of us were kind of blindly just doing these things, which we assume that's the way to do it. Like, how do you get on as a musician? You've got to just make, make a banger and, you know, flood the streets, yeah, yeah. or you've got to make a banger and do all the shows in Shoreditch or whatever. Like, And then I was like, well, a lot of us, even if I took myself out of the equation, I was like, a lot of people I know have been doing that kind of thing. And when we're not at the point where we're able to pay our rent or even our phone bill off of this thing consistently. So, and then I just started jotting down all the, all the, all the quote unquote myths almost like not to say them things don't work, but it's like that on its own or not done properly. Or do you know what I mean? There's more to it than that. So yeah. that's where the 10 terrible tips came, came about. And it's just to say that, yo, these are things that a lot of us have followed for years and has it really worked for any of us? So why are we still doing it? Do you get what I'm trying to say? And in 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 especially in today's climate with the internet, like the whole the internet has changed everything. Do you know what I mean? Not just the music industry. It's like if you want to be a writer or a broadcaster, which is literally what you're doing right now, there was a time where you gotta tick that box and or potentially tick this box, tick that box, go that way, go that way. Yeah. And now it's like, no, I just pull out my phone and get a light and I'm good to go. Kind of thing. Yeah. And I say what I want to say and I share it to the world and then I keep it moving from there. So that's what the Ten Terrible Tips is about. It's it's partly advice to myself, um, and tips for myself, but then I realize there's a lot of people potentially in that same position. So I just yeah, started yeah. writing it down and I thought, you know what, let's, let's put it in a book. And I, writing, like again, like I say, I like telling a story. I like writing, I like narrating, I like sharing experiences. So that was just an extension of everything. Uh, so that's that writing, that's uh, therapeutic to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, man. yeah, 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 for real. Like these, um, that's why I like doing these live talks because it's like, this is, the, I like talking a lot and then, talking conversations i seem to learn a lot through just conversations if sometimes okay, if someone's you like you need to do this you need to do that and i do i just shut off because it's like the energy comes across a bit like all right like that's where if we just have a conversation like now you just taught me so much just telling me what the book was about and what you're doing okay and the interview. Nice. so I just learned a lot and took a lot from that just from that conversation there so you know like, like oh, really? you said i understand the, the first steps, like like the terrible tip thing, like we're saying, the first steps are get you know get your stuff, get yourself out there, but then you got to take it to the next level now. So I guess that's what you're trying to say in the book. Yeah, 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 literally, and it, it it's yeah. it's almost like a don't take things for granted, and almost like it's it's 
it's not as simple as you think, but it's simpler than you think, kind of thing. So yeah. um, I'm trying to remember some of the tips off the top of my head. But, um, you know, like one of them might be you need to do every show or, you know, you, you, need, to get, you need to get your song to this radio DJ. Or, yeah. do you know what I mean? All them kind of things. And it's like, no, we've been tried that. We've been paid radio pluggers to put our song on. Sometimes they might not even put your song. Like, do you know, there's so many examples I can think of whereby it's like, well, no, that, that hasn't worked for anyone. It ain't worked for me and it ain't worked for no one I know. Yeah, kind yeah, of thing. So it's like, how else can we? And again, I think ultimately, when you really look at the 10 terrible tips, it's like it comes back to a lot of us artists just being in the creative space and not necessarily in the business space. So we're just thinking creatively, creatively. And to some extent, that's, that's our gift and our curse sometimes because one you don't know enough about the business and this is a business at the end of the day if you're if you're if you just want to sing for the sake of singing that's fair enough but if you're trying to put food on the table or whatnot whatnot then you've got to start thinking as a business um yeah. and then cool you could just focus on the creative side of things so then one you're either neglecting the business or if someone does come in to help you with the business you don't know what the hell they do and that's why you hear all these recent stories about this person owns my masters, this person owns my publishing. Yeah. Because people haven't really tried to understand the business. We've just been focused on just, I just create, I'm just a creative artist. Yeah, yeah. That's fine, but you need to know, do you get what I mean? And I think a simple thing for people I would say is just like, whatever it is you want to accomplish, find someone that's done it and just, or find a good, you know, two or three, but at least one, and just, just see their blueprint. And then just, 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 you know, what I mean, adapt it to your, to your own. Um, but again, if I think, talk about myself, I never really did that. If I'm really honest with myself, for the years and years I made music, I just thought make a really good song. That's all you need. The song's gonna be so good yeah, yeah. that Jay Z's <laughs> gonna come to my house and he's gonna come get me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and how many? It's like how many people have seen send their music to Jay Z? It's one of those ones, isn't it? So yeah. Like, well. And then you have people that don't even send their music. They just make the music yeah. and it's just them in their house listening to it. Yeah. And it's just all of them and their brethren and you're not even <laughs> sending it to Jay-Z. Do you know what I mean? But you're just thinking this is so... And I, 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 you know, not to knock anyone because I'm talking about myself, first and yeah. foremost, how I was a year, 18 months ago. And it was like just having epiphanies and being like, hold on, we've been making tunes. Do you know what I mean? And even if I take myself out of the equation, there's people that I know that, you know, every now and again, you'll hear an artist and you're like, bro, oh. this song is amazing. You should be there, yeah. kind of That's thing. And it's mean, like, well, yeah, heard, and it's like, well, what are we missing, kind of thing. Yeah. But I've obviously, and then, and then similarly, you hear songs out there that you're just like, yeah, they're a bit questionable. And you're like, well, how did how did that get there? How is that get, being played on the radio all day? How is Mad that person? Do you, get, do you know what I'm trying to say? And then, <laughs> so from that point of view, you've then got to sit down and think, okay, whatever it is I thought I knew, Maybe I need to rethink some things, kind of thing. So that's kind of what the, for a long story short, that's what the, the terrible tips is kind of all about. Yeah, that's true. Because it's, it's, it's well, like you're saying, there are some people I know out there who've got some songs. I'm like, yo, this is hard. Yeah, man, you know what I mean? Just push this out. And then it's like, more than just pushing it out. It's, I don't know it, but I'm still learning the industry myself. Yeah. And it's more than just pushing it out. Not, now I'm at the stage where I'm pushing stuff out. But it's like, you know, I'm still learning that there's more to it than just putting it out there. Kind of yeah, I mean, networking. yeah, I think that the one thing I could say, because that 10 Terrible Tips kind of highlights the problems. And then I have another book called um, How to Flip the Script, which is, is designed to kind of give you ideas on solutions. So the, 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 the simplest things I, I could say to maybe someone in your position or anyone listening who has to check this out is like, just... Know, know who your audience is and just figure out a way to find them kind of thing. Um, and, I, okay. and, and that's okay. like, and the mad thing about that is I actually studied business studies. I used to teach business studies. And that's one of the fundamental things, like know your customer. Do you know what I mean? Like know their age, what they're into, what triggers them, blah, 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 blah and where they are. And then just, do you know what I mean? But for too long, you know, um, as a musician, it's like that thing I tell people, like, you, you know, as a musician or a creative, you have to understand your, your stuff isn't for everyone. Not everyone's going to like yourself. And stop trying to make everyone like it. It ain't for everyone. 
But find Definitely. the people that are going to like it, that are going to appreciate it. And just chat Some, to them people. Sometimes the people that don't like it at first will end up liking it later anyway. So you've got yeah, those ones. Yeah. yeah. And everything ain't for everyone. Like, you know, I always give the, the analogy that, you know, I don't like all of my own songs. So mm. I can't expect someone else to like. There's songs of mine that I've made that at the time I made it, I thought, yeah, this is hard. So I listened to it a couple months later. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's all right. Yeah. Do you got yeah. what I'm trying to say? And I have to be real with myself. So if, if I feel like that and I made the song, yeah, do you yeah. got what I mean? So it's, it's all right to, 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 to be in a space where, okay, you know, you might not like, if I put out 10 songs, you might only like three or four of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The next man might like another three or four of them, etc. I think so, as yeah. well... Everything, everything, everything Chris, everything Chris, everything Chris, everything, everything Chris. Uh.